Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with Disaster Saves. That's right, it's been a long time since we did one of these, but I figured with By Blood Loan out, let's start the series up again. Disaster Saves, here we go, and we're gonna kick things off with a good one. Ottoman Empire, one of my favorite playthroughs, and this one has not quite gone well. As the uh, person who submitted this wrote, uh, had a little war with Yugoslavia, went easily, was on his way to a good game, then was attacked by Italy. That dragged him into a war with the Axis, alongside the allies, but all in all went fairly well. Together they defeated the Axis and then the allies, namely the UK, decided to declare on his puppet Iraq. And as a result, he is now fighting the allies. He was caught off guard, is starting to crumble under both the pressure of the land invasion and the naval invasions, and things are not going well. Let's see just how bad things are going, shall we? It's on Iron Man with historical focuses, so uh, let's go. Well, well, this is not going well. I'm gonna stop every one of these offensives because you're not gonna be winning. Before we, we look at anything in detail, I'll tell you something right now and it pisses me off every game. These are your puppets, I'm assuming. Yes, they're your puppets. If for whatever reason you find yourself forced into a war that you're not ready for, do not call in your puppets. Never call puppets to arms unless you absolutely need them just to go through their territory. This entire flank could have been avoided if you had just not called Afghanistan and Iran in. It's an entirely pointless front that is now dragging resources down for you. It's not good. It's not going to go well for you. It's a waste. It's a waste of men and material. Other than that, let's see what this looks like. Yeah, that's not a great front line, but I think I can stabilize it if I fall back a couple of provinces just set up behind the river. I would be able to hold on to most of the land. Uh, I gotta make do with what we've got. Ideally, I'd want to avoid linking up the Greek naval invasion with the main front. If I can do that, we can crush the Greek naval invasion individually. There's also naval invasions. Oh god, naval invasions going on, so that's not great. Okay, so you have a navy. I see you've stolen the German and Italian navies. I like that. I like that a lot. So I'm gonna split these off. I mean, I'm gonna group them up, not split them off. All your surface fleets and then your submarines. I'll give them some orders in a bit. My plan is to get the surface fleet grouped up and repaired and use my submarines to do convoy raiding in these sea zones just to weaken any potential naval invasion until I can get my feet on the ground and start actually doing something. I see you have a thing for um, Lord of the Rings here. I respect that. So you've got a couple of divisions that are almost done. I'm gonna force deploy them near this naval invasion as soon as I can so we have something to respond to it. I need quite a bit of reinforcements. I'm gonna cancel a couple of these because if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is not a great template. These are good for port guards, but don't use these for actual combat. Like, they're not not great. I like this, though I would add... Oh, you've got a lot of stuff researched. I would add support AA and engineer companies to them for more complete units. Okay, these... I would make these a little bit bigger, but okay. This is pointless, but I see it's your military police ring rates. Oh, okay. So, the combat width isn't great. I would either go with 30 or 42. Don't ask me why. I've just... I like it. And it's 1943. Don't bother with light tanks. Anything will pierce them. They have zero strength to them. That there's, there's no point to using these anymore. Just go with mediums from now on. At least mediums. I will be getting rid of these eventually. It's not gonna do well. Okay, I'm gonna start organizing your front. So let's move everything here. What is this? As This is horrific. This is absolutely horrific. I'm gonna cancel all of your front lines. Right. So all your generals are to the north here trying to hold this. I don't think I can hold this. I might be able to, but I, mm, I think I might feel more comfortable if I set up behind the river, though I will be giving up a lot of factories and resources if I do so. Let's just start by setting up defensive positions here. Just make sure we can hold this area. Speaking of big start, I'm going to take out all of these uh, really terrible tank divisions. I'm going to move them into Anatolia for now so they can help deal with the naval invasion. So I'm going to set up a little bit of a fallback line closer to our own terrain into something a little more defensible, let's say. Just hills, mountains, that sort of stuff. I don't want to overstretch myself. This is 
is going to be horrific enough as it is. Don't attack. Don't attack. Okay. I'm going to try and hold the north. I'm going to try and hold this. But if I can't, I'm going to fall back to this river line. Just here alongside this river. And then straight across the mountains here. Mostar and Dubrovnik. If I can hold those, that will be a good... Yeah, that will be a good run. This is mountains. This is hills behind a major river. It's all behind major river here. That's good. As far as I can tell as well, these are your only fronts. So, no, wait. So you've got the Albanian front. You've got the Yugoslav front. You've got a front in Egypt, but that's a lot of divisions doing nothing. I mean, the, ally the allies aren't going to push through here, so don't worry about it. And then you've got this horrific front. Okay, so I am at risk of talking way too much here. Let me just try and, and wrap my head around this, okay? Okay, so I'll have 46 units fall back to the river line. I'll have 46 or 47 units hold the Albanian front if they can. I really hope they will. I'm having my tanks drive back to deal with the naval invasion. I have a marine here that I'll also use for the naval invasion. Well, to contain it. I'll force deploy these guys as soon as I can to help with the naval invasion once again. And I'm going to peel a couple of units off this front. So I don't need this many units here. Oh, they also don't have a general. So that's great. I could leave 12 here. That would be four divisions per tile. I think that would be enough. So I'm going to move these guys north to try and deal with that naval invasion. It's a bit of a risk. I know. I know. The front lines stabilize. We'll go from there. I'll deal with the rest of the front lines in a minute. I first need to see what state this country's in. So got a deficit of guns. The rest is looking all right. We are short a lot of trains. That is bad. I'm expecting you to get bombed a lot. So, oh yeah, you're losing a lot of trains to bombing. So we'll need to fix that. Our economy is mostly okay. What are you building? Ah, I see you're trying to deal with the bombing. Yeah. Maybe. I don't think that's going to do much, though. Instead, I think I'd rather upgrade your railways because level one railways, not great. I want to have at least level two running everywhere. That's important. But honestly, your railways aren't are not the main concern at all. No trade. Oh, yeah, you're going to need to we're going to need to fiddle with your trade. Going to cancel all these imports. We'll first reconfigure your industry. So infantry equipment. OK, we'll need a lot of guns to fix our deficit. I'll need a lot of these as well. I'll leave it as it is. I don't need that much AA. I've got plenty. I'm not using all that much. Rarely need all that much on trucks. I don't like the improved light tanks. I mean, you're not even making advanced light tanks. Not that you would have to because they're garbage anyway, but I mean, these tanks are useless, so I'll probably start making mediums as soon as I can. You've got armor trains, which is good. You're going to need a lot of trains. They are getting bombed, so we're going to make sure they always get produced. So you've got subs in production. You've got destroyers in production. These guys have some stuff in production, so I'll just let them run what they're building, and then we'll just get rid of them. I'll look at the submarines afterwards, but what are you sending up into the sky? Improve their frame. Oh, you're not even using advanced. Oh, and these are pretty terrible, my guy. Pro tip. Get the best engine you can in here. Always get the best engine you can. Like those airplanes are not good. Not your CAS and not your fighters. <laughs> I'll need to see what the hell you're researching first. Okay. Radar sounds great, but you have other concerns. Let me see here. This is good. That's... Yeah, let's get night vision instead. Recon company sounds great, but you have other concerns. Namely, the fact that your engines are still shit. You want at least engine threes. These are amazing. Logistics sounds great. I'll leave them on for now. Six Signal companies, again, you, you don't need these. Get better stuff for the air, in this case, cannons. There we go. Logistics, I'm also going to replace that with something interesting. Submarine stuff. Yes, we're going to work on our subs. So I want my torpedoes doing as much damage as I can, unless I'm going to research new hulls. No, nope. let's make sure those torpedoes hurt as much as possible. So that's our new research. So when you're making fighters or casts or anything, make sure you get the best engine possible in there. The engine is incredibly important. In terms of weaponry, I see you went with heavy MGs. They're not bad, but I definitely, definitely prefer cannons and cannon twos. They, they shred enemy airplanes in my humble experience. So that is what I'm going to do here. Artillery is all researched. We've got the important ones here as well. I might be able to get railway guns or the war austerity trains. It's going to depend on what I like. For now, I'll keep making armor trains. And this is also pretty okay. Your navy is getting reorganized. I'm going to make sure they split off. So every time a sub gets damaged, it just goes back on its own without pulling the entire fleet.
complete with it. And I'm going to make smaller wolf packs. What do I mean by that smaller wolf packs? I'm going to set everything to automatic reinforcement and I'm going to create a template here. Subs. And these guys are just going to be 15 ships. I'm going to save this and they're going to keep 15 per fleet. That way I don't have too many subs. I don't have too few subs. 15 is usually a good number for a submarine fleet. Anything above that number, I'm going to send back to port as reserves and they can fill in whenever well, submarines get sunk. That will have to do on convoy raiding in these two areas. I think that'll be okay until I get more subs. The surface fleets are going to, I'm going to hold them in port and just repair. These guys need a lot of repairs as far as I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure they can actually get those repairs done. Looking at my stockpiles, I don't need that much artillery and I don't need that much support equipment. So I'm going to peel back these factories just a bit and use them elsewhere. Speaking of peeling back just a bit, I'm going to do the same with your light tanks. I'm going to leave two factories on the light tanks. I might be able to use them as a support company later, but I don't want that many light tanks. I am going to need an incredibly large amount of fighters, but good fighters. These are not good fighters, so I'm not even going to bother building them or the cast. Instead, I'm going to set up a production run for medium tanks, and you're already got uh, advanced mediums here, so I'm going to make some advanced mediums. Welded armor with medium howitzers. No, medium cannons. Improved medium cannons. Lovely. Medium turret three. Of course, we're going to slap a radio on there. Sloped armor, and then it's going to depend on what you want. Usually, I go with machine guns, but the autoloader might be nice for the extra breakthrough. You're going to need breakthrough to smash through those lines, and maybe some stabilizers. I don't know. And then we're going to go with Christie suspension, jack up the speed and the armor. So this is fairly well armored and reasonably fast. It's still got massive reliability. So I think this tank will work for now. And we're going to put these bad boys into production. Highest priority. We're going to need to st start a competent armored core. Rest of the production is fine. Like I said, I will get better airplanes and more of them, but not this type. I need some research first. So I'll, I'll probably ground whatever's left of the Air Force for now. Just fall back and just don't do any missions for now. I'll, I'll reorganize them and see what I can actually use them for. In terms of trade, I can tell we still have access to Siam. We can trade with, it looks like, some common turn members. We can trade with Huang Shi, that's good, and the Soviet Union. So we still have a friend. As far as I can tell, the Soviets and the common turn are our friends. The allies are the enemy. That's good to know. I'm going to improve my relations as well with the Soviets so I can ask them for lend -lease. They might be inclined to help us out. Speaking of, let's check out our focuses. You're suppressing subjects. It's not really a point to it. Instead, let's see what else we can do. I think you've actually done the tree already. <laughs> 1943 and you've done all of this already? Impressive. I think I'll stick with construction repair for now because we are getting bombed. We are getting very, very bombed. As you can tell by the repair queue here, we are getting decimated. Oh my god. God, look at that. So yeah, we're gonna fix that. This guy's not great. I would probably replace him. Consumer goods is always good. And Saidi Nursi is all right. Yeah, Nuri Der Demirag, I'm gonna replace with the war industrialist maybe, or the silent workhorse, El anyone but him. So I'm gonna unhire this guy. Uh, military high command, I'm gonna go with army regrouping. That's gonna be important. And that's it in terms of political power. New political power is probably gonna be spent on going to total mobilization and maybe hiring some more people here. We'll see. I probably also need to run campaigns like Jihad and Fidelity for manpower and bonuses. The rest seems okay. Maybe we can get some investments with the Soviets, get some ooh, get some extra cores here. But all in all, this looks okay. Let's unpause and see what happens. Okay, so we've got synthetic oil experiments. I'm going to get rubber processing and I'm going to start building synthetics because we are going to need them. When you're playing a country like this, that is entirely or almost entirely cut off from the supply of rubber, you're going to have a hard time getting an air force or anything competent built. So we're going to need to step up. Also, let's move all these railways up. This front, I need to pull all of these guys back. They need to start manning the front line. Just pull out, pull out, pull out. We need to make sure we uh, get these guys withdrawing in good order. All right, looks like the naval landings have happened. Troops are on the way to contain them. That is good. Let's keep them moving. And I can force deploy a couple of these guys 
guys soon enough. Soviets also want to send help. I'm going to take those 11 divisions. Thank you very much. All right, so that's eight more divisions that we'll have to do. I'm not going to force deploy these guys. It's, it's not going to work. All right, now uh, my priority is going to be fixing the units in the field because a lot of these divisions, 44 of them, are garbage units that are not fit for combat. Honestly, they're just not suited for combat. I'm going to be switching them out to something a little more competent as soon as possible. These Urukai will have to do, but for that, I'll need a lot more infantry equipment, so I need to fix my reserves of infantry equipment. My priorities for the first stage of this campaign will be to stabilize the European front, secure my coastline, and secure my industry, because I am getting bombed to death here. You can tell I'm not doing very well. Whatever's left of my air force, I am going to send it out to try and defend the skies of Asia Minor, just on interception for now. It is a bit of a pain. I'm going to take all the lend lease I can get without using too many convoys. And you can tell my trains are going down. I am losing trains everywhere. So yeah, we're getting, we're getting logistics bombed. We're getting strat bombed. It's not going well and I need those airplanes built. Let's check the officer core. So if you've gone land doctrines, you've gone with uh, superior firepower. That's great. Navy. Okay, that's good. Air. I wouldn't personally have taken battlefield support. This one's only good if you've got air superiority, which we obviously don't, but I'm not going to switch out now. I could probably do it though. One thing I do know is for Navy, you want to go with submarine primacy and convoy warfare. Those are pretty good. And then for the last slot, you want to get night fighting for the extra visibility bonus. Okay, it looks like we might be able to contain this naval invasion. It looks like so if we can get these divisions moving to the ports. Ah, crap. So the UK has landed troops, but like, look at these guys. They've been decimated by my convoy warfare. So the submarines are doing well. All right, just need to get as many of these boys out to that front as possible. I need to contain this. I need to contain this now. And we're sinking a ton of their convoys. So these naval landings should not be a massive danger. I think that with a little bit of finagling, I should be able to get these guys to back off. As long as they don't manage to make massive landings, I should still be good here. Balkan front is definitely stabilizing. That is good. Our deficits are starting to go down. All right, I'm going to change this template. Since we have the reserve equipment, I'm going to add support AA and engineers, give them more entrenchment and actually allow them a fighting chance against the horrific enemy air power. Oh, dear Lord, they pushed me out of Dubrovnik already. See, this is why you need... Oh, I cannot allow them to link up. If they link up on KOTOR, it's over. I cannot allow that Balkan front to link up with the main force. Oh my god, I hate this campaign already. I do also don't have the resources required to start hitting last stands. I just can't do anything. Anyway, naval invasion is getting fixed. The Balkan front is slowly, very slowly stabilizing into something a little more solid. It's not what I want it to be, but there's nothing I can do here. You've given me zero tools to work with, and I'm, I'm trying my best, dude. I'm trying my best. All right, we've got them out of roads. Now they clean up the rest of this naval invasion. Oh, spies. I forgot you. Why are your spies in British Italy? No. You take your spies and move them to the parts of the front line where you want to make an attack. At least that way you're going to work, get rid of the enemy entrenchment bonus. Okay. My anger is subsiding. We're fine. Frontline stable. Air is, of course, garbage still, but frontline stable. Do my best. We'll keep working through this. Okay, with the naval invasion over, I'm going to take those troops, 21 divisions. I'm going to turn them all into these goblin rangers. I know this is your, let's call it, port guard division. And we're going to guard all of our ports. That is our number one priority right after securing the actual front lines. We have to make sure our ports are guarded to the utmost. We cannot afford naval invasions behind our lines. We will 100% not be able to fix that issue if it pops up. These these motorized divisions, they look very fancy, but I hate to tell you they're absolutely useless. So I'm going to convert them to infantry. I'm just going to convert them to port guards as well. Make them useful that way. And I'll start putting these guys into production. Medium tanks. They've got decent amount of organization. Very good armor. Very good soft attack. Hard attack. Breakthrough. This is going to be my shock unit that breaks enemy lines. I doubt I'll be able to make a lot of them, but I'm going to start training at least one. We'll see how many we can get. I will need a lot more military factories, but first I need to 
fix my railway network, which is horrifically broken right now. And I will also need to fix my synthetic industry, which is also horrifically broken right now. It would also not be a terrible idea to actually annex Iraq. You had a pretty good idea there, because if I annex Iraq, I would be able to get some cores in the region. It would end up being more beneficial to me. So I'm going to switch back over to suppressing my subjects. It seems like a better deal than construction repair right now, because there's nothing I can do about the enemy bombing except try and fight them off. Oh man, it's scenes like this that just demonstrate the might of the wolf pack. Look at the strength bars on these invading units. I'm sinking their convoys as they're trying to land troops on my shores. And as a result, whatever the, it is that they do get close to my coastline, it's it's partially dead. These units have no strength left and my defenses should hold. I'm going to bolster these with a couple more goblin raiders, if you will. So just these guys. Once I have more resources available to me, my equipment deficit is almost fixed and I'm slowly starting to switch over units to the new and improved template. So I think I only have one more army. One more army needs to be switched out and then the entire front line will be the type of unit I want. Also, this guy needs to be a logistics wizard. Speaking of logistics, it's it's horrific. That's all I can say. I'm going to start making a sort of stopgap fighter because this this one just isn't going to cut it like it, it doesn't have the firepower. So we're going to make something a little bit better. The advanced small airframe. I'm going to put the best engine on it that I can. And my favorite is just cannons. As many of these cannons as will fit. They do a disgusting amount of air attack. Look at that. Of course, I'm going to get self-sealing fuel tanks. Might get something in terms of air defense line. Like maybe armor plates, though I don't know if armor plates are worth it in this scenario, but they can be very valuable. They do make the fighter ridiculously expensive, so uh, might not be the best. Yeah, I'll just add radio instead for the reduction in night penalty. Ooh, they're also ridiculously expensive. You know what? I'm going to make a lot of good fighters and we'll see if they can turn the tide. I'm going to try this. This is a, what's this, an anti-tank cannon with some small bomb bays. They got a decent amount of ground attack like 23 not bad. Pretty expensive though, once again. So we'll see how many of these I can actually, you know, make. We're going to need to supercharge our industry, um, which includes military factories, but also infrastructure because there are some steel producing areas that I need to get up to standard. So I don't have to import as much from the Russian, freeing up more factories for myself, obviously. I'm also going to get rid of pretty much all of the anti-air you had queued up. It's kind of cluttering <laughs> my construction queue. We're starting to get control of our territory. We're getting control of the seas around us. The sky remains a massive, massive problem. The only thing I can do here is outproduce the allies. And honestly, I don't think that's going to be an option for us. We'll just have to weather the storm. Ah, the Navy is starting to pay for itself. We're starting to inflict some early losses on the allied fleets. That is going to make it a lot easier to not only defend my coast, but launch my own naval operations. Because I think once I've cleaned up the Balkan front, hopefully that's actually going to be an option soon. Once my tanks and mountaineers roll out, maybe I can hop across and knock out British Italy quickly because I don't think no they don't really have a massive army and it's still Italy <laughs> I think I can reduce the amount of guns I need to produce as well and ramp up airplane production intensely, very intensely, because I need a lot of airplanes to clear my skies. Okay, so my first few tanks are rolling off the production line. I'm going to keep making more. Obviously, I have more troops ready to deploy to reinforce this Lebanese front. That's for later. That's not yet something I'm ready for. I've also got eight mountaineers ready to go. Two massive problems, though. I am entirely out of generals to assign, so I need to promote some field commanders, which is going to be difficult. I need a lot of command power to do so, and I don't have any. Plus, like, the supply here is awful. I have no more trains, and my production is not able to keep up with the amount of trains I need. I am effectively losing more than one train per day. Even taking my production into account, I cannot keep this up. I've not even been able to stop the strategic bombing of Anatolia with all my industry focusing on these fighters, I've like the ones I have are good. I've lost four fighters, of which 
three crashed and I've just decimated the enemy bombers. But the allies are massive, have an incredible potential for industry and I can't keep up. I also just noticed that my front line has been, oh dear lord, my front line has been breached. Okay, there goes Afghanistan. Oh dear lord, that salient is horrific. Oh, so far so good. This offensive is going somewhere at least. Uh, if I can push through, that will be a nice little encirclement and we can pull, just pull this off. Just need to pull this first and yes! Okay, so first encirclement is a go. And from there, we'll see what's possible. Any little breathing room I can get is just fine by me. Just fine by me. Oh, it seems I forgot to guard the port at Thessaloniki. Well, that's annoying. Oh, I've got them all bottled up here. Just need to move in for the kill and I'll have them crushed. Yes, that is a lot of divisions we're wiping out here. Looks very good. It looks very... Oh, that is... Faction. Okay, and well, rinse and repeat, I guess. All right, little offensive on the what is now, I guess, the Greek front. See how far I can push them before I run into a spot of trouble. I am feeling confident now to start a little offensive here as well. I'm gonna try and push for Port Said and then Suez and hopefully back that up with an infantry maneuver because these tanks are really good. They're still unpierceable by whatever garbage the AI has put out and they actually have a little bit of air support now so brilliant that okay thanks are moving and i think we'll take port said and suez come on come on come on ah look at that we've got this entire little peninsula encircled so the egyptian front is also winning i just wish the egyptian front had a general that would have been nice okay so i've taken el alamein i've taken el alamein that means once sinai has been cleared up i can push down to like let's say here oh let's look back at greece it's gone reasonably well i've pushed down to corfu at least so that's good i can break here i can encircle a lot of divisions all right, let's encircle these guys in Ioannina, hopefully. Oh, another pretty big encirclement here. That is massive. That feels good. Good, good, good. good. Oh, yes. The Ottoman Empire is winning on all fronts. Massive, massive casualties being inflicted on the enemy. I'm proud. I am proud of what I've achieved here. This felt like a lost cause. Well, not a lost cause, but it did feel like um, it was going to be a whole lot more pain than it eventually turned out to be. I think once I've cleaned up the Albania pocket, I can continue and hopefully clear out my European holdings. If I can do that, will be fine. Oh, I want to see what losses I've just I've inflicted on these guys. So I've taken 800,000 casualties. I should I should have checked this at the start of the video, but I don't think I took that many casualties in this run so far. And I've inflicted fair number, I guess. Mostly Americans, 1.7 million Americans. Whew. I was speaking of losing my navy earlier. I think we came out of this exchange pretty okay. Seven destroyers and it's a converted battleship, but still fair trade, fair trade. Once this goes up to a respectable number, like 2000, I'll swing them around and start contesting the allied air force. For now, my infantry and well, everything else will have to fight without all that much cover. We'll, we'll have to make do with what we've got. Fortunately, what we've got is pretty all right. So our units are just blasting through here. Oh, that soft attack, baby. That soft attack. Look at him go. Yes. I'm gonna slowly snake my way through here get all the encirclements in that i can and try and slowly strangle them so we're gonna push them out of dubrovnik and when i get them out of dubrovnik we have an encirclement ready that's another naval invasion oh i got caught with my pants down again i was exercising these units and i'll just hit last stand just this once and we'll be fine at any rate we uh, forced a little bit of a breach another encirclement here destroy the units keep moving forward take every tile we can make maximum use of our superior units i'm gonna try and smash through here with my armor it is far superior to anything um really anything they have if i can reach the border of this blue germany so this socialist republic of germany they're still not in the allies i don't think they'll join they are for some reason communist that would split off this entire front from the rest so that that would be completely cutting them off and i can eat hungry and this pocket on my own and to the north is all common turn and they are still my loyal friends please darling don't stab me in the back and i'm gonna send my armor on its merry way we're gonna go for a little ride here go for the encirclement go for the throat look at that they're just pushing through pushing 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 holy shit i did it Okay, 
Okay, okay, okay. Just gotta keep redeploying everyone and start hammering. Well, this was a ballsy move, but I think it's gonna pay out. It's gonna pay for itself. Fun fact, the communist Austrians, whatever they want to be, are in the common turn, so it's a safe border. But they're allowing the Allies military access, which effectively means, like, this pocket I created here, it's not a pocket at all. It can be fully supplied, fully reinforced. They have railway connections, they have troops coming through. This is just another shit show. So they can constantly reinforce this. It's such a pain. Every tile I take here flips to the Soviets. Why? Don't know. But as a result, there's nothing I can do here either. Supply stopped sucking for a second. I think the Allies redeploy their air force for a split second. My tanks are punching through the northern Italian defensive line. So with little luck, I can make something happen here. I do finally have the Allies on the run in Hungary. The entire front here has just collapsed as they tried to invade what was left of Austria, along with the Soviets, so I think I think we might be good here. I think we might actually still be able to win this. What I consider a win is if I can clean up this north and maybe take out Italy. I have not a lot of hope that I can take out France, but if it snowballs, we'll see. So in a rather obnoxious twist of faith, um, let me, let me just hide the UI. You can see what's going on here. The Soviets somehow got one, two, three tiles out of this terrain that I was busy conquering. Meaning I have to stop right outside Budapest with no way of capturing it. Because they are now completely surrounded by the common turn. Still, I guess there's not much I can do about it. I did manage to make a breach with my tanks in Italy. Fairly thin line, some good planes behind them. If I can push to the mountains, though it's probably not smart to use tanks for this, but if I can push to the mountains here, I'll have this northern section cut off. Yes, they can be resupplied through the common turn territories, but maybe I can push them out. Everything's looking all right. Yep, we still have a navy. That's good. And we have a breach in the line around La Spezia. So just push, just push, just push. I know it's mountains and I'm pushing into mountains with tanks. I just don't have any other options right now. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm also repelling naval invasions. The enemy fleets are still massive, but as long as they're not hitting my subs, I'll be fine. Just gotta keep pushing now. Gotta keep pushing. We're in the end game. We're in the end game. Oh, mopping up another encirclement. The massive casualties I've inflicted on the allies. Just... Oh, when Italy falls, I'm calling it. The game's slowing down. I've taken 2 million casualties. Not great, not terrible, but I've killed 1.5 million Brits. British, an assortment of others, almost 700,000 Indians, a million Italians, 2.7 million Frenchmen, about half a million Poles, two and a half million Americans, and an assortment of others. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, I don't know if this is good news or horrible news. The Soviets are in. This is not gonna speed up my game by much, but I suppose this means I have a new friend. Oh, Soviets are doing nice work. Nice work. Okay. I think we might actually be okay here. Well, I, I wouldn't exactly define this as okay, but you know what I mean. And there goes Poland. Great. Italy shouldn't be too far off either. And another convenient allied pocket. I think we're about to close this. Push towards Turin and that is probably Italy gone. I just hope I don't have to actually push into Sicily because I, I don't want to. <laughs> oh god. Every Every pocket, every mass casualty event I can inflict on the allies just feels so good. I've earned these wins. I have earned these with blood, sweat, and my sanity. Bye-bye, allies. Bye-bye. Look at them disappear. I think when Genoa falls, would that be enough? I really, I really hope so, because I don't want to to take Sicily. It's such a nightmare to take without air support or air superiority or naval superiority, but I think we've got them. They're gonna capitulate. There we go. British Italy has capitulated. That means technically these guys are encircled, so I'm gonna quickly give them the old razzle-dazzle. Anyway, I am going to end it here, mostly because it's 1946 and also because my sanity is gone. I consider this saved with Soviet help. We'll sweep the allies off the continent. We just need to do a little bit of campaigning in Africa to give ourselves even more cores. And that's it. Again, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and also consider submitting your own disaster save through the link in the description below. I always like having a couple to choose from and I hope you enjoy this next video as well. See ya.